Okay, so we've got going back to the uh, putting the eyeball in the socket. Um, what we'll do is we'll place the first one into the socket now. Again, if you're used to reference, you can switch back and have a look where the eyeball will be placed. But if you're comfortable with just guessing it, then do it like this. I'm just going to copy that and put a second one in down here. Remember, we're back to instance mirror, so um, there's nothing instance mirror on the main mesh, so there's nothing happening in terms of other spheres over here. So now we'll go to soft selection in point mode and we'll just pull the eye around to get the eye shape that we want that matches now that sphere you can see I'm just making a rounded shape pulling the what will become the eyelid over the top and then in in the corner of the eye underneath. The good thing now is that I've got an edge loop showing uh, with the colour that helps me, guides me really at this stage. There's no eyebrow at the moment which is a little bit annoying because it would be helpful. I'm just going to smooth that one there a little bit and I'll just tighten it up. Just allow us to see a little bit better, bring it right round around the eye. And you can see straight away that we've got a much, much neater eye shape. Or much more accurate eye shape, should I say. I'll just do the second one. So again, what we're looking for is a couple of things. So first of all, we want a tight corner of the eye in there. We want a nice eyelid coming over. Again, smooth it. If you're not getting what you want, then use the use the smooth tool. Tighten up the mesh as needed. Bring the eye around. Nice, open, rounded oval shape. Rounded oval shape. I don't know if you can say that, but you know what I mean. Um, So that's quite close. Those green loops have actually really helped to keep a focus on the loops. Um, without those, we wouldn't have been as uh, wouldn't have been as easy just to keep track of where we want those loops to go to make the shape of the eye. So that's been uh, it's not, it's not something I would do on a normal job, I only did it to show that that's um, where the loops are, but it's actually really quite nice. I'm just going to subdivide it and you can see the shapes that I'm going for here. Uh, sometimes in this mode you just get a better feel for the, for the model. And it helps you to tighten up where it needs tightening, like the corners of the eye, the outer corner and the inner corner. And to get that eye shape going quite nicely. Be careful. Um, some people model a lot in sub D mode, like a subdivided mode. Uh, n not something I like to do a lot of, because I like the mesh to be quite right at, in the unsubdivided mode. Right about that. Okay, let's take soft selection off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more loop all the way around and right on the edge like that and I'm going to bring that out and this is going to start forming the eyebrow which eyelid goes in and then it comes out to the brow that'll help me down below 
because that can go in and that forms the lower lid helps with the corner of the eye you can see it's given us quite a nice shape now I'm just going to do some a little bit of cutting um, from the center outwards and this is going to cause some problems and as you know by now what I mean by problems it's going to cause me some shapes that will have to be dealt with so straight away there you can see I've given myself um, a triangle so again we'll clean that up switch back into to the other views if you're ever unsure it gives you a good side profile you can see that it's given the needs to come up slightly <coughs> and we just switch to the ghost mode again just to make sure it's not a million miles off where I want it to be really we start putting some of this muscle detail in here now um, the eye, the furrowed brows, etc. Um, and switch back to black mode. So let's just make that finish. Oops, the eye. Let's move that. Um, finish this area up here. Around the top just to get that back to a uh, quad there, and I think I just did a bit of work up here that needs to be better. Extrude that up in a moment. always looking for opportunities so change that slightly there again just change the flow a little bit um, the opportunities I'm looking at are where I'm going to start putting detail in um, and how so we need as I said we need to start putting big groups of muscles to make the furrowed brow the eyebrow itself will be coming up here and now we'll need to put I'm going to change the flow here as well because I want to put a split right the way through the centre there leave it as a triangle out the edge and we'll bring this brow right up and out and the same what we'll do there is we'll go little bit higher and I can actually split all the way around there which gives me too much detail here but I need it to make the, the next bit correct It's hard for me to explain some things when my eye sees something. So just looking at that loop all the way around there, we don't particularly need it, but it was a nice flowing loop around the top of the head. Um, and I just followed that along, um, didn't explain that to you very well. So again, keep making 
this bit more pronounced. A little bit careful around the seam at the center. Make this bit pronounced. Could smooth this later and do a bit more work, but we're almost there with this eye. Bring it forward. I'll just save it and then have a look at it smoothed. I'm not too far off with that one. Bring it out, as I say, a bit more. possible just using a cut tool get rid of some of these triangles okay so just think about the next eyebrow the lower eye so we'll indent in the center bring the furrowed center up there definitely needs to be a split through here but I don't know whether it'll take it all the way around actually it probably will just about take it 